Today is the day Congress will either agree on a new budget plan or face another government shutdown. The Senate is expected to vote on and pass a budget compromise. The deal would raise federal budget caps for two years on defense and domestic spending. Democrats in the House say without commitment from Speaker Paul Ryan to put the DACA program to a vote, they won't support the bill. Republicans say the increased spending is fiscally irresponsible. Well, state senators passed a bill that would let customers buy alcohol and wine and then send it to their homes. We're told 45 other states allow wine to be shipped directly to homeowners. Senate Bill 2278 could be reconsidered before it goes to the state house. At 601, Vicksburg fire investigators this morning are working to find out what caused two homes to catch on fire. We're told a one-year-old and a two-year-old died. Initial report. And he's now in the Jackson Hospital with burns on his hands and face. Investigators tell us they're still working to figure out what happened. And a doctor is set to be sentenced today for bribing former MDOC Commissioner Christopher Epps. Dr. Carl Reddix admitted to the crime. He faces up to 10 years in prison, $250,000 in fines. His sentencing is set for 9 o'clock this morning. At 602, MDOC guards find sneakers, pain medicine, rope, and tobacco at the Parchment Work Camp. They tell us they all also found a baked pecan pie. Imagine that. The bust is part of Operation Zero Tolerance. It's been going on since March. MDOC leaders say this amount of contraband is unacceptable. They plan to continue the shakedowns at prisons across the state. Classified memo about the Russia investigation could be released today. President Trump is expected to approve the move, even though Democrats and the FBI don't want the memo to be released. American civil liberties were thousands of bodies could be moved out of a Jackson cemetery. It's located on the campus of the University of Mississippi Medical Center. State lawmakers are working on bills that will allow the hospital to move 3000 to 7000 bodies. We're told they were patients at the Mississippi Hospital for the insane that operated from 1855 until 1935. Lawmakers say it would cost two to three million dollars to remove the remains. Axe will hit the stage at the New Brandon Amphitheater in the spring. Yeah, so look, excited about know, this. Looking forward to this. WJTV's Terrence Friday shows us an exclusive look, look at the construction and shares an important warning from the city's mayor. Friday, WJTV 12. Terrence, thank you. St. Andrew's Episcopal School will host their Black History Month celebration today. There will be guest speakers, a music presentation, and an artifact display. The event will be held at the lower school campus off Old Canton Road in Jackson. It starts at 745 this morning. Man, they're having a great season. The coach is so tough. Uh, he is so tough. Vic Schaefer <laughs> never satisfied. He wants a national title to come to Starfield. They're 24 No, They might just do it this Let's year. Let's do it. I know. Let's bring it on back. Wrap it in maroon and white. Time right now. Five. There's still weeks left in this year's deadly flu season, and doctors say you can still protect yourself by getting a shot. The FDA says the flu vaccine is the best way to lower your risk of getting sick. We're told this year's dominant strain is H3N2. Doctors say the strain is a challenge to the vaccine, but the shot is more effective for other flu strains. It's not too late. At the Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, returned to the campus on Sunday. They picked up backpacks and other belongings left behind after the school shooting almost two weeks ago. The school will reopen on Wednesday. The debate on gun control is expected to continue in Washington, D.C. this week. An NRA spokesperson pushed back against some suggestions President Trump made last week, like raising the age limit to buy certain weapons. And the average price of regular gas is down six cents in the United States. It's now two fifty nine a gallon. A survey says this is the first decline since December, but prices are expected to go back up. That's because of crude oil costs. The average price in Jackson is just two twenty three a gallon. Six oh five, two towns in Mississippi Delta. They're asking lawmakers to approve a two percent restaurant tax increase. Senate Bill thirty thirteen would help fund recreation, tourism, parks, and economic development for Carrollton and North Carrollton. If the bill passes, the towns would need to approve the taxes by a sixty percent vote. And a Jackson firefighter becomes an internet sensation. It's my favorite story of the morning. A video shows him singing at a Walmart in Jackson. Just listen. A long time coming, but I know. A 
change gon' come. I hear you. Captain Ernest Whitlock, he sang for a black history program at the Walmart after the original singer, we're told, was late. This video has more than 50,000 views on Facebook. I do follow him on Facebook. I know he loves Facebook, so good for him for stepping in. I'm not surprised. I want to hear more. I do, too. And oh, I want to eat some of his barbecue. Remember, he has the plum it's barbecue? absolutely delicious. Number one barbecue in all the firefighters absolutely. in Jackson. Absolutely. He's so good and talented. -talent. <laughs> yeah, he's a five-tool player. We'll have to post this on Facebook for him as well. 607 is the time. Meteorologist Kelly Scott. He can cook. He can sing. What else can he do? <laughs> Movie as well. Night, Night school. school. Yeah. yeah. We've talked about that on the show before. I do like Tiffany Haddish. She's such an inspiration. Okay. Yes, indeed. Well, good. Well, we'll have to be on the lookout for that. Absolutely. I just read her book, The Last Black Unicorn. It's a okay. good read. Okay. Very funny. Sounds like it would be fun. <laughs> you can find us on Facebook. Please like us on Twitter and visit our website. It's WJTV.com. Please engage with us on social media. We are all over the web. In fact, I am live streaming on Twitter right now. Good morning. Welcome to WJTV 12. I am Brittany Noble Jones. I'm Andrew Harris. We've made it to 6 o'clock on this Friday morning. Uh -huh. It is the greatest of all work days. If you School counselor is arrested. He's accused of inappropriate contact with a Jackson student. 49. It's 541. Lawmakers in Washington, D.C. decide to have a snowball fight after a fourth no Easter hits the city. You got I hope it. my mom's not watching. <laughs> well, the weather is going. It goes all the way till midnight, Brittany. That sounds like a good time. Yeah, there'd be a lot of whiskey there. Yeah, we get a pair of tickets. Maybe some passes. That would be nice. We'll have to check with HR. Okay. See what we can do. You, you, you handle that. Celtic Fest would be a very, Let very good time. Yeah, yeah, fun time had by all. Five. In that front. I love Mississippi weather. Yeah, it's going to be a great yeah. weekend. So many fun things to do. That's true. Food yeah. truck mashup tomorrow. Our weekend is planned. It is. It it's is. so planned mm -hmm. for. And the Jackson Public School District can expect immediate changes. Each JPS Board of Trustees member resigned yesterday, and Governor Bryant announced he will not sign off on a state takeover. There are about 27,000 students in the district. While some schools are getting state recognition for outstanding achievement, the district as a whole got an F state rating for two years in a row and a state audit revealed 24 violations that need to be improved immediately. The governor and mayor Chokwe Lumumba announced they will form a 15 member advisory commission. It will include appointees from the governor, the mayor and the WK Kellogg Foundation. We will maintain the Tay Holmes reporting live. Good work out there. The time now is 631. A freshman turns himself in for the shooting deaths of a student and his friend at Grambling State University. Julian Wayne faces two first degree murder charges. Investigators say he shot and killed Grambling State Junior Earl Andrews and his friend Monquarius Caldwell after a fight on Wednesday. We're told Andrews was shot first before Caldwell was killed rushing to help his friend. The bodies of the 23 year olds were found near two dorms. The victims are from Farmerville, Louisiana. And Alcorn State University sends an Alcorn alert to students and staff at the university. It says they're investigating an armed robbery on campus. Officials say three males were near the infirmary and the chapel when four men, three with hoodies and bandanas, one with a blue jacket and a mask, robbed them at gunpoint. We'll check in with Alcorn State University later today to find out if they arrested those suspects. And the man accused of shooting his ex-girlfriend and her current boyfriend is set to appear in court today. Yeah, we're told that woman a caregiver out at Highland Home in Richland. Police say that shooting occurred outside the facility. A Broadmoor Baptist Church employee is accused of taking more than $300,000 from the church. Leaders tell us they found out about the theft in September. After an investigation, they say the employee took the money in a 27-month period. The church says they will not press charges, but they will cooperate with investigators if the case moves forward. We checked in with District Attorney Michael Guest. He sent us a statement that reads, We intend to begin an investigation into the matter to determine if a crime has been committed and what recourse our office may have. And a credit rating agency warns Mississippi school districts about a state Supreme Court decision. Court says Mississippi lawmakers are not obligated to fully fund a school budget formula. President Trump declares the opioid epidemic a public health emergency. Now federal agencies are required to use grant money to fight the problem. In Mississippi, officials say more than 40 people in the state died from prescription drug abuse this year. So Hines County deputies helped get prescription drugs off the streets with the drug take back program. People got to properly dispose of leftover or expired medications at the Metro Center Mall. You've got a significant and we're told more than 4,000 pounds of prescriptions were collected last year in Mississippi 
and properly disposed. And if you still need to get rid of your prescriptions, it's all right. The Laura Police Department is here to help. They're hosting a drug take back event. You can drop off your old medications on Saturday in the front lobby of the police department from 10 a.m. until 2 o'clock p.m. The office of a black doctor who pushed to desegregate beaches on the Gulf Coast is added to the National Register of Historic Places. The National Park Service approved the listing for the Biloxi office of the late Dr. Gilbert Mason Sr. We're told he led a wade-in protest to challenge segregated public beaches in 1959. The beaches finally allowed black people to visit in 1968. You can take your kids to the zoo from 5 until 8, both today and tomorrow. That's 5 until 8 p.m. And oh. lots of station folks are going to be out there. Yeah, that's right, in their costumes. In costumes, And you don't too. have a costume this year yet. Oh, I was thinking of the Roman Centurion. It's my old standby. Well, I thought that you do that every year. I do it every year. <laughs> it's a good look. I can pull it off. I've got some sandals and everything. Little strappy sandals. <laughs> oh, yeah. Andy. It's good stuff. It's yeah. got, a, got a breastplate on Kelly, there. Kelly, help them out. Got a sword. I, I, I don't have a 